Aloha, folks. Welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. I hope you enjoyed that little video montage from the meetup that we had at Stowaway in Tustin. It's a tiny little tiki bar in the Tustin Marketplace, and uh, my buddy Leonard owns the place. He did an incredible job getting his staff to make the Breezeway Cocktail Hour cocktail. Breezeway cocktail. Breezeway cocktail. So if you were at the meetup and you didn't see yourself in the video, I apologize. I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do with the footage when I was shooting it. If I could do it now, I'd probably shoot a lot more of the people who came to visit and to meet each other. We did have in the audience a bunch of previous guests from the show, like our buddy McBiff, Mr. Ed Hamilton of Hamilton Rums, uh, the Murder Queen, and of course the whole thing was organized by our friends from the Contigo Tiki Bar, Gregorio and Anna. So I did a great job of making my cocktail, the Breezeway Cocktail Hour Cocktail. I think a lot of us drink probably too much and uh, still paying for it like two weeks later. <laughs> and I do plan on doing more of those in the future. Maybe we'll do something in Las Vegas here coming up. Maybe something on the East Coast, something in Florida perhaps. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was good meeting people who are as passionate about the show and the cocktails as I am. But tonight, I wanna show you how to make three simple syrups. And the definition of a syrup is sugar and water and something else, or just sugar and water. The simple syrup is specifically sugar and water. Now the differences between the three syrups is only found in the amount of sugar. And I've seen different recipes from different people and they add a little this and a little that to their own simple syrups. We're gonna go super traditional. And for those of you who are bona fide cocksmiths, I'm sure this might be a little bit uh, rudimentary for you, but we are trying to introduce new people into the cocksmithing world of tiki. So I hope you enjoy this regardless, and if you find that I've done something maybe questionable, then I would love to hear about it in the comments below. Please don't be a dick. Now simple syrup is legitimately just sugar and water. And the reason that we're gonna use CNH is because it ties into Hawaii. The California and Hawaiian Sugar Company was founded in 1906. It operated as an agricultural co-op from 1921 to 1993. Sadly, CNH stopped processing Hawaiian sugar cane in 2017. It started it in Maui and it ended it in Maui. But Spike, you say, you're holding a bag of CNH sugar right there. So obviously it didn't stop doing it. The California part of the California and Hawaiian Sugar Company is still in operation in Crockett, California. They still process sugarcane, turn it into sugar. A lot of it now, I believe, is from Vietnam, regions like that. It's sad that Hawaii has lost that legacy, but I guess it's for air quality and uh, native land rights. So I, it's a good thing, I, I suppose. But I will tell you that the legacy of CNH left us with this amazing little Hapa Haole jingle. Should we do that? I know, you're like, dude, I didn't sign up to watch you sing. Too late. Oh, hey, look at that. A guitar. The guitar that I use in my band, The Hula Girls. And I decided to bring along a friend of mine from uh, from my band, The Hula Girls. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is my buddy, Spike Marble. Hey, how you doing? Good, good to see you. You wanna do this song? Yeah. I know we haven't really worked it out or anything, but mm -hmm. I think like for the people. Mm -hmm. Okay. C and H, your cane sugar. Growing in the sun, island sugar, growing in pure, fresh and clean. CNH, pure cane sugar is the one. What'd you think? Yeah, it was pretty good. That was okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Spike. I appreciate it. No, my pleasure. All right, with the history lesson out of the way, we're gonna need some special tools to create the simple syrup. Of course, we're gonna need the Breezeway stove. Now, a lot of cocksmiths say that you can make simple syrup just by putting the mixture into a shaker thing and shaking, shaking, shaking. Supposedly, it's supposed to give it like a heavier mouth feel, maybe a little more tooth to it. The way that I like to do it is by dissolving the sugar into the water using heat. Okay, we're also gonna need a spoon, measuring cup and funnel, and then I store my homemade syrups in these bottles. And they're great, they have like this rubber guy that goes over the top here. I think it was in my video, 15 things you need for your home tiki bar. If you do like these bottles, there will be a link in the description below. You can click on that link and you will help support the breezeway. So the first simple syrup we're gonna make is called simple syrup. Yeah. And of course, whatever you put into this stuff is gonna go into your cocktail. So make sure that everything's clean, you're using good purified water. But what we're gonna do is just a simple one-to-one -one syrup. So we're gonna pour one and a quarter cups of sugar into a measuring cup. We're gonna get this thing heated up. And then I'm gonna quickly pour the sugar in here. And before this has a chance to really get too hot, I'm gonna pour the one and a quarter cups of water 
So it's by volume, it's not by weight. Pour this inside. And as it heats up, you just wanna keep stirring it. And this is probably the syrup that you will use the most in creating tiki cocktails. It's featured in everything from the 151 Swizzle to the Eastern Sour, to the Fog Cutter, to the Rum Keg, the Trader Vic's Punch, all kinds of stuff. So it is something that you should certainly do for yourself. Of course, there's some great companies that make simple syrups. And if you wanna just purchase it and have it on hand and not deal with any of this, that works too, but you're throwing your money away. It's literally sugar and water. There are other syrups that I would say you should probably buy from a manufacturer just because it's easier. Like there's some stuff that's super complicated like falernum and maybe we'll get to that stuff eventually. Okay, the water turns kind of a milky color, but you can't see any more grains in here. As this continues to heat up, the milkiness kind of goes away and you get like a really nice clear liquid. Now what I would normally do is I just let this cool on the stove, but since we're gonna go through a bunch of different things today, what I would do is put a funnel in one of these bottles and then just uh, go ahead and pour that in there slowly in case you poured too much in. That way you won't overfill it. And pour scalding simple syrup all over yourself. So that two and a half cups gets close. It's not perfect. If you wanna be more precise with it, I'm sure you could figure out the math yourself, but uh, I'm not a chemist. This works for me. And I'm gonna leave the top off this to let it cool for a while. Okay, next one. The next syrup we're gonna create is a rich simple syrup. Now rich simple syrup is simple syrup, but double the sugar. So what we'll do to make this easy is I'm gonna do two cups of sugar, oh my God, to one cup of water. We're gonna make more than we need, but I just wanna keep this simple for everybody out there. So we're gonna do the same thing. Two cups into the pan, followed by one cup of water. We'll turn the heater on. Uh, you don't necessarily wanna bring it to a boil, by the way. It wants to be kind of like a simmer, but the key is to really keep it moving. And uh, you don't wanna burn your sugar. Is that a thing? Burn the sugar? I don't know if that's a thing. Dude, all of a sudden this is a cooking show. I'm not like a cooking guy. I'm a home bartending guide. Yeah, guy, I'll go with that. I'm gonna let that heat up for a bit. So it's taking a little bit longer for this to go from milky to clear. We'll just keep stirring it for a bit. All right, I think that's about good right there. Again, I would typically let this cool, but in the interest of time, I'm gonna go ahead and pour it. And I know that I made more than I need, so I'm gonna have to slow down as we near the top here. Oh, wow, that's perfect. Look at that. Dude, who knew that would work? We're gonna let this go ahead and cool over here as well. Oh my God, that's hot. And now for the syrup that has been a point of contention for online forums, for cocktail guides, for YouTube bartender guys. Everybody has a different opinion about rock candy syrup. Rock candy syrup is a form of simple syrup. It's just water and sugar again. Now, some people think that rock candy syrup is just rich simple syrup. I tend to disagree with that because I think rich simple syrup is rich simple syrup unless, you, unless those terms are interchangeable. But the idea of rock candy syrup is that this stuff has so much sugar in it that if you leave it for too long, it will start to crystallize and turn into rock candy. I even asked my buddy Leandro from The Educated Barfly and I was like, what do you do about rock candy syrup? And he goes, I try to put as much sugar in there as possible while still keeping it liquid. I'm just gonna go two cups of sugar. So we just found out that this thing can take about three cups of liquid. Maybe we'll go two and a quarter cups of sugar and then three quarters of a cup of water. Let's try that. One quarter cup of water. Man, I don't know, that might not be enough liquid. It's pretty chalky. Let's see what happens when we heat it up. And we can always add a little bit more water too. Okay, so it looks like maybe that's not enough water to make this really a syrup. Maybe we'll throw a little more water in here. But the idea is to create a syrup that is as much sugar as possible. Well, I guess, you know, now it's starting to break down a little bit. So maybe we'll, we'll give it a, a second here and really try to whip this thing into a liquid. And again, I'm so eager to hear in the comments below what you think about my version of rock candy syrup. And if rock candy syrup is supposed to just be rich, simple syrup. But Vic specifies rock candy syrup in things like the Mai Tai, like the 1944 Mai Tai. And then he specifies uh, rich, simple syrup in other stuff. So I think that it's two separate things. 
And again, some people say that it's three to one. Some other people say that it's four to one. It's a liquid now, but this is ridiculous. So maybe just another little splash of, uh, of water. Simple syrups don't have to be like scientific, but of course you don't want to be sloppy about it either. Okay, so it looks like after this thing's spending enough time over heat, we have liquid. It is thick though. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take this, pour it into one of these bottles. That is hot on the plastic, and I'm sure people in the, in the comments were gonna go, dude, you shouldn't be pouring that into plastic. Okay, so that's an interesting development right there, right? And as I've always said on this show, dude, I'm learning this stuff with you. Like, I've got the basic idea, but obviously I didn't know how much this was gonna fill up the bottle, so it's not a perfect thing, but like, are you gonna go through that much rock candy syrup in a couple weeks anyway? Mm, probably not. Oh my God, that's hot. Okay. <laughs> Let's just go with the uh, simple syrup here. So what I do with these bottles, just to keep track of what everything is, is that I will, I will literally put them at the edge of a table, and then with a Sharpie, I'll just write simple on this one. See? Okay. Oh, Jesus, that's hot. And then on this one, uh, Rich, I'd be much neater about this, but I can barely hold these things right now. Really, you should let everything cool down in the pan before you go bottling it, but I just want to get this out of the way. So, uh, and then this is rock, rock candy syrup. Okay, simple, rich, and rock. Okay, and so, there are the three simple syrups. Now these are super important in tiki cocktails. They're really easy to make and I hope that you guys enjoy making them at home. If you make them, leave a message in the comments below. If you saw me do something that, that you didn't approve of or you thought that I could have done better, maybe to get these things more even, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. I hope to see you again next week. Please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, leave a comment and I will see you in the next episode. Aloha.